everybody, welcome back to my How to Become an ESL Teacher series. If you haven't watched the first two videos, I will link them up here. I will also link my CELTA series if you're interested in that. Go ahead and watch those and you'll get all caught up. But without further ado, we're just gonna jump right into this without a long introduction. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about what type of country or countries you can consider when becoming an ESL teacher. So I'm gonna break these down into continents and then focus on specific countries that are maybe really popular, a lot of people choose, why they choose them, what type of person might choose them, and then I might also highlight some hidden gems in there. Disclaimer, obviously, obviously I'm making wildly huge generalizations about these countries. Obviously, they're going to have a whole bunch of different type of ESL jobs, but I'm just going to be focusing on kind of the most common, the most popular, the average job. So I might say, you know, if you go to Africa, you're going to be mostly doing, you know, volunteer work. However, you might comment down below and be like, <laughs> excuse me, I make like $150,000 as an ESL teacher in Africa. That's awesome if that's you, but that is not normal. So I'm just going to be talking about the average job for the average ESL teacher with average experience and average certifications, okay? So don't get all mad, but I would love to hear from you guys in the comments down below what type of ESL job you have so that we can all share the knowledge, okay? The three criteria that I'm going to be making these generalizations from is my own personal experience as an ESL teacher. Also, my friends' experience is as ESL teachers because I have lots of ESL friends and they've worked in a whole bunch of different countries and continents. And finally, just from me looking on hundreds and hundreds of ESL job descriptions throughout the years, I love just looking at different countries and seeing what kind of money you would make, what the contract links are, what's provided, what the benefits are, all that kind of stuff. Those things are how I am, you know, making these wild generalizations, okay? And lastly, when I'm talking about the pay that you're going to be getting, I'm basically talking about in Western standards or American standards. So for example, when I lived in Indonesia, I made really good money for Indonesia and I was extremely comfortable. However, if you took that Indonesian pay and put it into American pay, I was not making good money at all. So when I say making good money, I'm kind of meaning about like, can you live comfortably and save money to take home? That's, that's kind of what I mean. But obviously you can make good money in places like Thailand for living in Thailand. So, but I'm always just conscious because I always like to save money. So if I move to a country and I have, I don't make enough money to save anything to take it home, then I didn't, in my opinion, I don't really make good money. Does that make sense? First off, we're going to start with Asia. Now, Asia is definitely where the most ESL jobs are. This is the continent that most ESL teachers go to because there are just ESL jobs coming out your ears, okay? So, we're gonna start there, but it's also rather a large continent with lots of different options, so hold on tight. Now, we're first gonna talk about where you are going to make the most money in pretty much the entire world as an ESL teacher, and that is the Middle East. I'm talking about places like Saudi Arabia, UAE, Oman, the, those countries, and others in the Middle East. Those countries, you can make the bank, okay? You know what I'm saying? However, those are also extremely competitive because you can make so much money. Those also require pretty much the highest qualifications throughout the world, so people that have their master's degrees, people that have Delta, people that have 15 years of experience, those are kind of going to be the type of people that you're going up against. So if you're a first time, never taught before ESL teacher, it's going to be pretty hard to get a job there. Ideally, that's kind of the area that I would like to go to next. We'll see if I make it. If I do, you heard it here first. If I don't, then just forget, forget I ever said this. These places also usually require the longer contracts in Asia, the rest of Asia at least. A lot of times you can sign for six months or 12 months or something like that. But in the Middle East, a lot of times you're gonna sign for two or three years. These areas can also be quite expensive in the world, so look for jobs that provide housing, especially in a place like UAE. If you don't have housing, a lot of your money is gonna go to your housing. So you might actually not end up making quite as much money. Obviously this area of the world, there's a lot of 
caution and fear about it, but in general, ESL teachers are regarded really highly, they're really respected, and there are really safe areas. Like the UAE is quite a safe country. I know people who have worked in Oman and the UAE, Saudi Arabia, and they've had perfectly fine you know, experiences. However, do your research before you accept a job there. This is also a great place to talk to teachers who have already lived and worked in that country, but I'm gonna talk about that more in the next video. In the Middle East, you also have to be very, very aware of their customs and what's expected of you as a expat or a visitor in their country. Obviously, you need to respect all cultures throughout the world. That's like my biggest pet peeve, but that's another video. But especially in the Middle East, especially, I wanna to talk to us ladies real quick. There's a lot of expectation about modesty when it comes to women, and that is something you have to be able to respect. There's not gonna be many people that are like, deciding between Thailand and the Middle East because that's not really gonna kind of be the same type of person. So if you're gonna go to the Middle East, you need to be very aware of what's gonna be expected of you and you need to respect their culture. Elsewhere in Asia, you can still make a lot of money. You can make a lot of money in Japan. You can make a lot of money in South Korea. You can make a lot of money in Hong Kong. Usually those jobs in those countries also offer housing, which is really helpful because places like Hong Kong, which is the most expensive housing market in the world, if you're not provided housing, then probably don't do it because <laughs> you're not gonna have any money at the end of it. There are also other places that you can teach. Of course, China is probably the number one of the entire world where people go to teach ESL. Some people love it. I have friends who lived there for years and taught in China. Some people hate it. I personally, I don't think I'd want to live and teach in China just from visiting. It, I don't, <laughs> it's gonna sound really bad like I'm bashing China because I'm not. But just for my personal preference, I loved Hong Kong and that's about as close to living and teaching in China as I want to get. Um, but don't take my word for it. You know, I have, as I said before, I have friends who loved it. So I just think, especially with China and South Korea, you can have amazing experiences or you can have horrendous experiences. So you really want to do a lot of research on the school that you'd be working for and talk to teachers who have worked there previously because I've heard a lot of horror stories about you know, applying for jobs, seeing pictures, and then actually getting there and it's nothing like what was described to you and then you're locked into a contract. So yeah, just, just be really, do a lot of research on both Chinese jobs and South Korean jobs. But on the same page, you can also have incredible experiences there. If you're more into the Southeast Asia vibe, like Thailand, Cambodia, Indonesia, Malaysia, you're not gonna make as much money, but as I said before in the introduction, you're gonna make enough money to be comfortable in those countries, don't get me wrong, and you're gonna have this vibrant cultural experience. And the other cool thing about living down there, I used to live in Indonesia, is you can hop to country to country so easily and for like really cheap. So it's really a cool place if you want to see a lot of places. But by Western standards, you're not going to make a whole lot of money. A lot of times those jobs provide housing as well, which is really nice. Next, we're going to touch on Africa. This is probably going to be really, really short because there are not as many ESL jobs in Africa as I would like. Africa is my dream, my dream upon dreams. But unfortunately, if you want to make money, that's going to be really, really difficult. You can live and work and make money in Morocco. I've seen a lot of um, jobs there and also Algiers, occasionally Egypt, but those places like Tanzania and Botswana and Kenya and those kind of things, it's really, really, really rare to find ESL paying jobs. There are tons and tons of volunteer work there. So if you're just looking for an awesome experience in Africa, you can definitely find volunteer work there. But, and they're mostly, they're mostly gonna provide housing and probably some kind of stipend and maybe pay for a lot of your meals or provide meals for free, but you're gonna have to pay for your airfare to and from and you're not really gonna make any money there. Next, we're going to talk Europe. Now, Europe as an American and with lots of American friends, that is what I get the most questions about. Um, 
from lots of my friends who are considering becoming an ESL teacher. They want to become an ESL teacher so that they can live and work in Europe. Well, I hate to break your heart, but as an American, that's gonna be extremely difficult to do because of visa processes. There are going to be options for you, such as Russia, Poland, sometimes the Czech Republic, and that's, that's pretty much it. You're also not gonna make very good money there at all because it is expensive and they, it's not super high pay, and most of those jobs do not provide housing. So, yeah, if you're an American, ESL is probably not going to be the way that you can get to Europe. It is possible. I do know some people who have done that, um, but a lot of those people have had hella experience and have worked like at universities. So it's going to be pretty rare. If you are from the UK and you can legally work in the EU, then congratulations. You can work anywhere in Europe, but you probably already know that and you've probably already been everywhere, so you probably don't really care. <laughs> That's not the exciting thing. Probably Asia is the exciting, or South America is probably really exciting. So yeah, Europe is probably not necessarily the place you're gonna make big bank um, working as an ESL teacher, except of course, there are going to be exceptions to that rule, but it's kind of like working in the US as an ESL teacher. Like there are jobs, but it's super competitive. They're not super high paid and it's an expensive place to live and exist so yeah yeah Europe's probably not not the best ESL destination unless again if you can do volunteer work every summer I see lots of ESL jobs for like three to six week ESL camps in places like France or Germany so it is possible to live there as an ESL teacher but it's pretty hard and it's really, really hard for Americans to get working visas there. I'm going to briefly, briefly touch on North America. Places like Mexico, you can get ESL jobs, sure. Central America, sure. They're not gonna be super high paid, but it's kinda gonna be like Southeast Asia, like not necessarily the highest pay, but it's a very cool cultural experience. If you're an American or Canadian, it's not that far away from home, so that's kind of handy. But those jobs are pretty few and far between. ESL jobs in the US or in Canada, again, it's like Europe. They are there, but they're extremely competitive and they're not super high paid. And it's also, if you're not American, it's really, really hard, really hard to get working visas in America. I'm also just gonna throw Australia into this mix. Yet again, there are ESL jobs there, but they are very few and far between. Australia is hella expensive, but it is, it is, it's possible. It'd be easier to get a working holiday visa, move there and then find a job. You're not really gonna find too many jobs before you go there because again everybody speaks English it's it's yeah it's gonna be hard to to stand out when they can just look out their window and pick someone so go to the country first and then get a job and finally I'm going to talk about South America I'm gonna be real with you South America is probably the place that I know the least about when it comes to ESL jobs just because it hasn't been super high on my list yet. So whenever I see a job for a South America, I'm not like, oh my gosh, no! You know, I kind of like, oh, I'll look at that later. I have been offered a job in South America that I accepted and then I ended up backing out because it started to kind of creep me out a little bit. Saying that I would really do your research on a job in South America, but that's a huge generalization. There are a lot of ESL jobs in Chile, which is where I got offered a job. There's a lot in Peru, Brazil, Argentina, Colombia, uh, Ecuador. It's just kind of a spattering throughout the whole continent. You're not gonna make a lot of money, but yet again, you'll probably make enough money to be comfortable in whatever country you're in, but you won't necessarily save a whole bunch of money. A lot of those jobs do seem to provide shared accommodation, so it's not gonna be the most glorious accommodation in the world, but it's something else you don't have to pay for, so yeah. So if you're really interested in South American culture and you wanna learn Spanish, then getting an ESL job would be, uh, down there would be awesome. However, if you're looking to make a lot of money, it's 
probably not the best place to go. So there you have it. If you have any questions, please comment down below. And again, I would love to hear your personal experiences living abroad as an ESL teacher. If I had to pick one place as my top recommendation for, actually I'm gonna pick three places. <laughs> three places as my top recommendations for a first time ESL teacher, I would say Hong Kong, I would say Singapore, or I would say Japan. All of those places, English is prevalent enough that it's not gonna be really crazy not knowing the language. In general, all of the people that I've ever met in those countries have been super nice, super helpful, super excited about learning English, and they're just really cultural. I'm an English teacher who can't think of a word cultural bombs. Um, basically, if you're interested in living in a country that has a really unique culture, but it's not gonna be like absolutely terrifying, yeah, <laughs> then those, those three countries I think are really, really good. They're very Western friendly, but also offer a very unique Asian culture. That's at least a place to start. I could also say South Korea in there, but I've never actually been to South Korea. So, I mean, North Korea. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend working there. Um, so yeah, I don't actually know as much about South Korea, so that's why I can't actually recommend that. But a lot of people have their first ESL job there. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. And yeah, I don't really have anything else to say. Next week is another part four. What it is about, I don't really know. I think it's about the job process, maybe the interview or the application process. I have it all written down somewhere. And I'm just forgetting it because it's really, really hot in my room right now. Be sure to subscribe. I think I'm asking so nicely. So please subscribe and please like this video. Please share it with your friends. I'm asking you so nicely.